Hey guys, what's going on? Culprit here, and welcome back to Mailbag. This is episode three. We took a little bit of a hiatus there. Um, reason being, you know, Battlefield 4 reveal. I started streaming, just had a lot on my plate. Wanted to really kind of dig into Battlefield 4 reveal in depth, and so that kind of took a lot of my priority away. But uh, I'm anxious to get back at this. This is, uh, you know, only episode three, but it's, it's already one of my favorite series, just because I like to talk directly to you guys sometimes. I like to interact and things like that and answer your questions. It's just something I enjoy doing. Um, I feel like it makes overall a better channel because I feel like you guys get to know me a little better. I get to know what you guys are interested in and all that. So um, basically how this works, uh, I went back to the episode two of Mailbag. I looked at all the questions in there. I took a couple out of there. There was also two others uh, by a gentleman who posted in my Evolution vs. Revolution video. And rather than just typing out in the comments there where nobody was going to see it, I thought they were pretty good questions. So I used them over here in Mailbag. They'll be the last two. Um, so, yeah, if you want to ask me a question, it could be about anything. Gaming, Battlefield 3, uh, you know, just PC, anything really. You know, we have tech uh, tech question here, too. Be personal life, YouTube, whatever you want. It is an open forum. Just post it in the comments. If you want some kind of anonymity, feel free to email me or message me on YouTube, whatever's easier for you. I do check all those as well. So, let's get right into it. The first question is from OK Troller, who's now, I believe, the first guy to get two questions in two separate episodes. He was in episode two as well, I believe. Um, hey, Culprit, I'm a big fan of you. I really like your vids. Thank you, man. I think you said that in the other one, too. I appreciate it. I haven't let you down in the meantime. Uh, my question is actually three related questions, so we'll get them one by one. We'll attack them one by one. Uh, what do you think of BF4 having six or five classes instead of four? Um, I'm okay with this. I have no problem with that idea, you know, at large. Um, I think there's room for another class. Uh, but I, I would need to see more. I would need to hear more about what their plans are if it's really necessary because I think it's easier to balance at four and we know they had some issues with balancing just those four. So I don't want to expand to five or even six just for the sake of expansion. I want to see that there's an actual reason and a need for that and what their plans would be for that. Um, like I said, I think it's easier to balance just for four. We know that they had issues, you know, assault and engineer were really the only two classes that you would be like, I need this right now. Whereas support and recon were more personal preference play style. I would rather them focus on balancing those four before they add any new ones. But, like I said, I'm not opposed to this. I think there's room. I think it would probably add a little more depth, obviously, to the game long term. So, I'm not against it, but I need to hear more details. And they would have to make sure they did a really good job at doing it. Um, part 2, do you think having Medal of Honor Warfighter customization in Battlefield 4 is good? Um, I hear this a lot. Uh, people rave about this. And they've, they've mentioned this a lot in regards to Battlefield 4. I don't really fully understand this. I, I felt, in a full disclosure, I didn't play much Medal of Honor Warfighter. I was very turned off at the game at release. I thought maps were terrible. I, I've gone on record all this. Um, so I didn't play a ton. Uh, 10, 20 hours maybe. So I'm not, by far, I'm not an expert at all. I wasn't that blown away by Medal of Honor Warfighter uh, customization. I know they had a lot of skins. They had a lot of paint and, and things like that. But as far as, you know, I think their attachments were just more realistic. They were like legitimate attachments you would find in the real world. Which, that's what I enjoyed. The aim points and things like that. Trijicon and, and all these things. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't think it was anything crazy. Uh, maybe they had more options in Battlefield 3. But, and that's because I feel like, I feel like Battlefield 3 kind of lacked in the attachments. I mean, at first you get in there and you're like, wow. But it's the same attachments for every gun. And it's just kind of, you know. Um... I would, I, I mean, I. this is where I think they should really sink their teeth into. They should do a lot of, you know, gadgets, tools, uh, attachments, guns. This is where I think the meat of their work should be. Since it's not a complete rewrite, not a complete recode, they're evolving off of an already existing platform. They should have more time to do this and just add more content. Add more content. The engine's there. The gunplay's already made. All these things. Obviously, you're going to tweak and you're going to work on those. But I think the, the chunk of your work should be in the content. Give us more content. Maps, guns, items, attachments, these types of things. Um, one thing I do want to note, I'm, I'm kind of tired of the uh, the kills to unlock attachments. I think that's, you know, I think it's lame, frankly. Uh, you go through all this trouble to make the the game about playing the objective. You know, when your points, your arming MCOM, and these things, you're trying to balance that to encourage people to play the objective. And then you have attachments completely, you know, hung up on kills. And I just, I mean, I know that's probably the simplest way to do it. But I'd like to see us, you know, kind of, let's, let's talk about different ways to do that. Because um, we know it can be kind of painful sometimes to get, you know, those kills with those some of those terrible iron sights and things like that. So just something I'll throw out there for now. Part 3, do you think the sniper in BF4 should have a shotgun as a secondary or even a mini PDW like the M5K? And if not, do you think that we should have a pistol customization in Battlefield 4? So it's obviously two parts. First part, no. You're telling me now these single bolt action rifles are going to have an M5K on their back? So now they can sit on a mountain. And, and this is not a huge roller. Uh, you know, we have... I hear this all the time. It seems like, you know, sometimes I feel bad for recon. 
because they don't get any love. They get picked on a lot, but then there's a lot of recon out there that seem to want it all. They want everything. They want to be able to do it all, and it drives me crazy because, in my opinion, if you're playing recon, play recon. You're not storming rooms. You know, you're not clearing houses. Play recon. And there's a reason it's called recon and not sniper. Okay, I think there should be, if they're going to you know, work on the recon class, they need to emphasize the tugs, the mavs, you know, the spotting, these types of things more. That is what I think a recon should be about. Not one-shot kills to the head, chest, neck, breast area. Uh, it just drives me crazy a little bit. Um, if you want to storm buildings, you want to use the M5K, use it. You know, there's there's no nothing that says you can't. I guess one way around this would be to allow you to pick up a second primary, as they do in Call of Duty. You know, you could drop your secondary or, or something like that. Uh, I'm not really needing that. I, I think there's balance there. I think if you're going to do a one-shot rifle that suppresses the hell out of me as an assault guy, you should not be able to whip an M5K out of your pocket. I just don't feel like that's 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 needed. Um, you know, if you want to storm buildings, you know, when I use an AEK, I can't hit you from 500 yards. That's my trade-off. I can chew you up from 15, can't hit you at 5. Um, not as efficiently as you can anyway, and, and that's how it works. And, and trust me, some of the guys I run into have no problem no-scoping, quick-scoping me at a close range, so... I, no, I do not want to see that. I would probably drive me insane. Um, as far as uh, pistol customization, yes, I think that's long overdue. Um, I think they just ran out of time, uh, really, and they didn't have, you know, they didn't think it was important enough to really flesh that out, which is a mistake in hindsight, obviously. I think sidearms got no love and they get no respect. It's one of my uh, more, f I enjoy that side of the game. Uh, getting a kill with your sidearm is, is pretty rewarding, and I think it's one of those areas that really. Uh, Separates men from the boys, if you will, the good players from the great players. Guys that can get that, that they can extend that seven, eight, nine kill streak because they're using their sidearm. I, I, I like that. I, I don't want to see that go. I don't want to see a shotgun as a secondary at all. No, I, I think that's just opens more problems than it's worth. Although I think there's a good chance we're going to get that. We'll see. Thank you, Troller. I appreciate the question. Second question, Jewettes. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is you know, obviously a tech hardware question. I'm out on a limb here a little bit, so please don't crucify me if I misspeak or I'm, I'm flat out wrong. But you asked for my opinion, I'm going to give you my opinion. Uh, your thoughts on the way PC games are going to change with Oculus Rift Virtual Reality headset? Hope I said that right. I've never really said that out loud. Uh, and if you think that might drive more players away from console to PC. Now, again, like I just mentioned, I don't know much about Oculus Rift. Uh, really, all I know is when you and uh, Skid Kid kind of geek out and Skype chat. I listen to you guys, and I've said I don't I don't see this on the horizon as much as you guys do. I know you know development wise it's it's there, uh, but I don't see it gaining the acceptance that a lot of people think. Uh, I think it, it's more of a long term thing. It's almost a proof of concept at this point to see if it's viable and, and what it really is like. I'm excited by it. It's very intriguing. Um, if it works and and it delivers, yeah, I could definitely see that being a uh, you know carrot at the end of the stick or something to entice people to move over. But I think there's plenty of enticements there right now, and some people are just strongly against it. So I I don't know. We'll see. But yes, it would certainly be another reason to move over. It'd be something I would be very much looking forward to exploring as an already PC gamer. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. I, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. Uh, Steambox, Oya, Game Stick are all going to compete with current future consoles, but these are based on Linux and Android. With more tablets and smartphones being used for games, you see it as an issue for next-gen consoles and their primary use is gaming. Yes and no. Uh, I think, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's unproven. GameStick, I'm not even sure what that is. Is that a new name for something? I don't even know. I, I don't keep up to date on all this stuff that much because, A, I don't want to be enticed, and, B, I don't see anything making me move. I mean, any console is going to be a secondary thing for me. I more keep an eye on it for my boys. Now, Steambox is another thing. I think... Steambox could be a big time competitor because they obviously have the platform of you know Valve and Steam. Um, I I would I would go out and get Steambox right away, I, just because if I could use my library and move it over, done deal. Take my money. Um, I think that could be a direct uh, competitor to uh, next gen. Certainly, we get to see what next gen is going to be able to deliver in games and sales and pricing. I think that's going to be a huge thing. Everybody knows Steam, Steam sales. You get just great product, great great games for very very cheap, and there's nothing better than that. Uh, next gen consoles need to have a plan in place for that. They should be able to do it, I would think, but we'll see. Uh, nothing's been said yet. Um, beyond that, uh, I think the big threat out there is Apple. Uh, if they're able to develop, you know, they already have Apple TV. If they're able to develop kind of a game station, which you know would, would just extend their environment where I can play this game on my iPad, I can play it on my iPhone, I can play it on my iPod, I can now play it on my TV. It's all enclosed, one account. Uh, I, you know that would be uh, you know pretty pretty big threat I think the consoles right now it could really kind of just suffocate them out but for me 
as a real, I don't want to say a hardcore gamer, because I don't think you have to be hardcore, but as a real gamer that like plays real games, I don't think, you know, Apple, iOS, iOS games have the depth that other games do. Maybe they will in the future. And another thing for me is the uh, the peripherals that kind of lacking. I like for certain games. Uh, Minecraft. I cannot play Minecraft on my iPad or my iPod. It drives me crazy. I'm used to the keyboard and mouse. It's just so intuitive. It works. I just cannot use the touch screen. So I'd have to see a lot of work there to, to really make a judgment. But yeah, I think they're all going to be competitive. There's only so much market. And they're all going to try to charge a lot of money. And, and a, you know, typical gamer is not going to be able to shout two grand to get all the, all the things. So... Yeah, they're going to compete with each other. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. But I think Steambox, of those you mentioned, has the best advantage. Uh, this is from I Am Too Clumsy. Uh, he posted in my Evolution vs. Revolution video. I thought they were good questions. So rather than just answer them in text in the comments where nobody would really see it beside him, I figured I would use it here today to talk about it. Culprit since BF4 has been rumored to release on Xbox 360 on October 29th. And if it comes out on next-gen consoles, which it will, don't worry. Um, do you think these could be Xbox? Do you think there could be an Xbox 360 and 720 multiplayer together? Um, I've actually seen this uh, asked a couple times now, you know, and no, I, I don't see that ever happening. Um, obviously, it sounds like a cool idea, you know, the more players and, and things, and and obviously, I, I, you know, there might be the guy that can't upgrade to the 720. Maybe his parents aren't going to let him, or whatever the case may be. Um, he's going to get left behind, and maybe his buddies are going to get 720. He's hoping he gets to play with them. That would be cool, but I don't see it. Uh, there's going to be such a competitive advantage to the 720. They're going to have 60 frames, 720p, uh, at least, or 1080, I'm sorry. Right? 1080 at 60? I think that's their goal. Um, that doesn't sound like much, especially if you're just used to playing 30 frames. But no, if, if you were going up at 30 frames, playing a guy at 60 at those different resolutions, big competitive advantage there. Um, and, and I've said before, and I know people don't like to hear it, and I sound like an elitist. I'm not doing that. I'm doing that to be cautionary to you guys. I do not think the current-gen consoles are going to actually be getting Battlefield 4. They're going to be getting Battlefield 3 with the Battlefield 4 maps. You're not going to get the destruction. You're not going to get the HD graphics. You're not going to get the added player count. I mean, how would that work? Think about it. Um, no, I, I don't. I think they're going to be very different games. They're going to play on the same maps, but I think there's going to be an even bigger divide. Like right now, between consoles, current gen consoles, and PC, there's a divide. There's just a, a content and, and environment gap between graphics and playability and, and player count, obviously, is a big one. I think there's going to be an even bigger divide between Xbox 360 and Xbox 720, so I don't think it works. So, no, unfortunately, I do not see that, though it is a cool concept. And your, all, your other question is, and also, how would you feel about smoke grenades and flash grenades in Battlefield 4? Uh, I've gone on record with saying I'm, I'm okay with this. I would like to see this uh, explored, let's say. But there is a caveat that they have to be balanced. These, these are not something you just make and throw in and see what the community does. Because while in the right hands, in the right match, it can make add so many different levels of tactics and strategy... In the wrong hands, in the wrong place, they could drive you off the server in rage. You know, um, as 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 powerful a tool it would be to the tactical guy clearing rooms, it's also going to be equally, if not more, powerful a tool to the troll and the griefer and the harasser. So, it would have to be a toggleable at the server level. It would have to be balanced very very finely. Um, but at the same time, I think it's time we explore this. Uh, I, there have to be some trade-offs. Obviously, you wouldn't get your regular grenade. I'd actually like to see a little more of a trade-off than that. But, uh, you know, it has to be balanced, uh, just like anything you introduce. But I think that's that's an obvious place to introduce some new ideas, new new tactical uh, things to the game. Uh, I think it's time that it's explored. Black Ops did it three, four years ago, I guess. Um, and I enjoyed it in Black Ops. I used it a lot. I think I used a stun grenade, which is a quicker one. Every time I'd go to enter a room, I'd just chuck one ahead of me, see if I got a hit marker, and I would clear the room. And it was a great tool. Used it all the time. Never really raged about it, because then it also opens the whole other part of perks and encounters and things. So it just adds more layers, and I'm always for layers. I'm always for decisions, but uh has to be balanced. So there you go, guys. There are my four kind of questions for Episode 3 of Mailbag. Wish you guys a good Friday. Hope you're having a good, uh, gonna have a good weekend. Uh, my little man, well, my oldest little man, uh, is actually starting soccer tomorrow. I'm pretty psyched. Can't believe he went from being like this big to now he's running out and gonna play soccer. But I'm amped because these are the things you think about when you become a father, especially to a son. And uh, it looks like I'm about to start that journey. Whether he likes soccer or not, who knows? But uh, he's at the age where he's gonna start doing these things, and it's time for me to enjoy that with him. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm hoping he likes it. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having just as uh, exciting weekend as I am, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.